timestamps on PC files never lie, or do they? Hello everyone, and welcome to TechFix Flicks. In this tutorial, we install and use Attribute Changer, available from the link shown on screen now, and linked in the written description accompanying this video. Whilst attributes including date created, date modified and date accessed are typically accepted as fact, they can be straightforwardly manipulated to show any values we wish with the assistance of Attribute Changer. In broad terms, Attribute Changer allows us to alter attributes and names of files, and potentially of greater significance, the date and time upon which file operations are recorded as having occurred. The app provides comprehensive filtering, ensuring that where necessary only specific files are targeted, and reporting functions detailing the operations it performs. At the download page, we click the link to download Attribute Changer, and the publisher understandably recommends only downloading from this link to avoid unwanted additions bundled by some download sites. At under 5 megabytes, the download completes quickly, and we click to run the downloaded file, granting permission where requested by user account control. We select English at the language selection screen, noting numerous available additional languages. At the license agreement screen, we acknowledge our acceptance via the relevant radio button, before clicking next to advance. Novice users will wish to select the default destination location by clicking next, although we prefer to browse for a custom installation path. With our custom path entered, we also progress to the details screen, where we click install. Installation is brief, and we click finish to conclude. In the notes here, we are advised that this application is a shell extension. Let's see what that means in practice. We run File Explorer, where we find 8 sample files of varying types, which we've created purely for this project. We select one of the files and right click it. In the context menu which appears, we see two new entries have been added, namely Change Attributes and Change Attributes Use Saved. Clicking Change Attributes takes us to the main interface, where any changes we make will be applied to the file or files which we've selected. We'll quickly close the main window to select more files. We press Ctrl A to select all of our sample files, again right clicking for the context menu, and selecting Change Attributes. The main interface appears. Any changes will now be applied to all 8 selected files. We're going to make a very simple change to the case of the file name, and we click the Change Name drop down, moving to Name Uppercase, which we select. We then click Apply, which prompts this query. Note that we could also run a simulation by ticking this box, which would naturally simulate the process without altering our actual files, allowing us to assess the impact in a safe environment prior to committing to permanent changes. At the end of the process, a report is generated in the Reporting tab. We click OK to close the dialog, and like us, you may find that your file names are immediately unchanged. We therefore press F5 to refresh the screen, and note that our file names have all been changed to their uppercase equivalents. You'll have noticed the option to change the case of the three character file extension, which can be made visible by clicking View in the File Explorer window, then ticking File Name Extensions. The View menu disappears, leaving our file extensions visible. This can easily be reversed by returning to the View menu and unticking the same item. Of course, there are applications specifically dedicated to changing file names, offering greater renaming functionality, and we've covered one of them in a previous tutorial. Whilst this is a very useful function, it's not the main purpose of this app. Let's change the view once again, this time to show more information about our files. We right click a blank area of the File Explorer window, selecting View from the menu which appears. We change our view from List to Details. Among those details listed are the date modified. We can introduce further information by right clicking the column headers and selecting Date Created. We can now see the dates and times upon which our files were created and modified. Typically, these dates are regarded as the literal truth, but they can be easily manipulated. We again select all files using Ctrl A, right clicking for a menu, and selecting Change Attributes. At the main interface, we select Modify Date and Timestamps, opening the dialog from which we can make our changes to dates created, modified and accessed. Clicking the drop down accesses the system calendar, and we scroll backwards through the great year that was 2020, heading back to the optimism of New Year's Day. We click on the first. With January 1st selected, we can move to time. In addition to using the handles as we did for the date, we can also type directly into the boxes. 
We therefore change the time to the stroke of midnight, with the hour amended to 12, the minute amended to 0, and the seconds likewise set to 0. With the information for our amended date created field set, we click apply, again encountering the processing confirmation witnessed in the earlier example. As before, the files are processed and a report produced. Once we exit the main interface, we see that all of our files are neatly aligned and shown as implausibly having been created at the same time. We can return to the main interface to change additional values as we see fit. Now, we'll briefly tour some of the additional features. The advanced button takes us to a filter, which we can use to restrict the application of our attribute rule, meaning that only those files which meet the criteria we specify will be affected when the rule is run. Here we can restrict to only files created, modified or accessed within specified date ranges, or meeting size requirements, or having specific attributes. Using the tab to the right, we can also use file names as a filter. Rather than experiment directly with our files, we can click this box to run in simulation mode, which is also indicated in the title bar. We've already seen the reporting tab, so we'll skip to settings, where we can ensure that our settings are saved upon exit, and define the behaviour of the context menu entry and main interface. Back at the main interface, note also the toggle between basic and advanced mode. Clicking it replaces the date and time fields with a drop down, containing further options to explore. In particular, note that add subtract offset values adds a further tab of options, and the offsets are very much as we'd expect. Also available from the drop down is the option to randomise date and time, which introduces the randomise tab. Again, we can randomise between a specified range, giving a more realistic data set than our New Year's Day example. We also have the option to impose a strict order, which wouldn't allow a file to have been modified before it was created. Be sure to check out our back catalogue and subscribe for our future projects. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you found it useful, please consider subscribing by clicking the logo on screen now. If you'd like to see more, there are two suggestions currently on screen. If you have a better, faster or more economical solution, let us know in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. You're also welcome to follow us on Twitter. Until your next tech fix, goodbye.